So earlier we had this slide where we kind of introduced ways of describing water vapor, the amount of water vapor there is in a parcel of air. And I said that I thought it was pretty cool how your author, um, I think, intentionally kind of showed this where we have a chunk of air at this elevation, that's this volume. And as a chunk of air rises or ascends, rises vertically or ascends, that same chunk of air will expand. It just does. And I'm, we're going to talk more about that. And I, I think I'm, I might have mentioned, um, and I have a slide to kind of reinforce this, but while we're on here, remember we said that as you climb a mountain, the air gets thinner. As you climb a mountain, um, the atmospheric pressure gets less. So that's to say down here near the geosphere, here's the Earth's surface, we have this sort of density, okay? Atmospheric, those are gas particles. So we have high pressure, high P, okay? Up here at upper elevations, the pressure is less. I'll just go ahead and say low P, low pressure. And so honestly, if we do kind of have this imaginary boundary around a parcel of air, as it's forced to rise, it will actually expand because of the lower pressure up there. Okay? So rising parcels of air will expand. Keep that in mind. Now, instead of, um, instead of lowering air temperature, I would rather up here at the top say, um, cooling air temperatures, cooling a parcel of air. Because in, in, uh, in chapter four here, we've been talking about how you can take a chunk of air with a certain amount of water vapor, and if you cool it down, you, can, you will lower the amount of water required to reach saturation. As you cool a chunk of air down, you are actually getting higher and higher relative humidity. You're getting closer to saturation. So cooling um, an air temperature, actually we can take a chunk of, of a, a parcel of air and we can, while we cool it, um, go ahead and make it cool to the point of condensation occurring, 100% relative humidity. So here we go. Parcels of air, as they are forced to rise, and we're going to talk about these things called lifting mechanisms. So how do you get a chunk of air to rise? It's called different different ways of different lifting mechanisms. But if you get a chunk of air to rise, it will expand. And here we go. As it expands, this expansion actually is a form of work, one way to look at it. And the work needs to be funded by something. So actually, it's this expansion that is work, and it's funded by something, so the parcel of air gets cooler. OK, actually, that must be on my next slide. This one just says a rising a parcel of air that's forced to lift or rise, one of four different mechanisms, five different mechanisms, it will expand. Okay, so this is the slide. Well, maybe it's the next slide. Now, what I've been describing as a chunk of air basically minding its own business, it expands and it cools, is actually a type of process we call adiabatic. A diabatic process is where you would have a chunk of air or a parcel of air and basically you would add heat from the outside or have heat basically sent out of the parcel of air, okay? And that is a diabatic process. Um, this chunk of air is, is cooled or warmed. Uh, we talked about different ways to, to transfer uh, heat. We talked about um, conduction where, um, where we are, uh, conduction is where we are going particle to particle, okay? Convection is where a blob of air would relocate. And radiation, remember, doesn't need any medium. It's just zzz, radiation energy. So I mentioned this cooling process, rising and cooling, as a type of adiabatic process. That means unlike a diabatic process, basically it doesn't have any exchange with the, the, the system and its surroundings, okay? It's, it's isolated. So any sort of cooling or warming that we see actually is, is done by or within the system, okay? And so now we're back to, and 
I have I kind of got ahead of myself on my next slide. I kind of talk about how expansion is work, and that work is funded by the thermal energy of the of the packet of air. But just so you know, rising air um, will expand and cool. Okay. Now, one of the things I haven't talked about yet, there are reasons why. Um, chunks of air will descend, and as a chunk of air descends, it will contract, and as it contracts, actually work is done on it, and it will warm. Okay, so sinking air will contract and warm. So adiabatic cooling. <laughs> We're going to talk about why a chunk of air would want to be lifted in the first place, but if you get it rising vertically, okay, it will expand. Okay, and the reason it expands, like I mentioned earlier in this segment is because it is has less and less atmospheric pressure around it as it rises. Its volume will expand. This expansion is a type of work and the, you can't you can't do work without that it being funded somehow. And it is work that work that expansion is funded by the thermal energy of the parcel of air itself. It's an adiabatic process. Um, so the air temperature drops, it decreases. And this is a natural phenomenon called adiabatic cooling. Adiabatic because it's, there's no exchange with, of, of, of energy with, between the parcel of air and the surroundings. So here we go. Um, uh, a parcel of air that's forced to rise will cool. And actually, we generally know the rate at which it will cool. So this is uh, something that you're going to want to kind of hold on to. Um, it will cool 10 degrees Celsius for every 1,000 meters. Remember, um, well, I guess I haven't mentioned it here, but you might already know that 1,000 meters is the same thing as one kilometer. Okay, so for every 1,000 meters or one kilometer, the temperature will decrease 10 degrees. So I've got a little diagram here, and notice that we have kind of vertical marks here. There's 1,000 meters, 2,000 meters, 3,000 meters above um, sea level or ground. Now notice I've got over here, basically closer to the Earth's surface, we've got high pressure Okay, at upper elevations. The air is thinner, we have lower pressures. Um, all right, so let's look at our rising parcel of air. So we have a blob of air here, and actually we talked about one type of lifting mechanism. We said that it's, it's um, basically convection can make a parcel of air that's just a little bit warmer than its surrounding to go ahead and warm, excuse me, to go ahead and rise, because it'll be buoyant. But let's just say it starts at 30, our blob of air, you can kind of see it poking up, it's starting at 32 degrees Celsius. So we're going to let it rise to 1,000 meters, and voila, it cools 10 degrees. It was 32, and now it's 22. We're going to let it rise another 1,000 um, 1, meters, and now it's going to cool another 10 degrees. It's going to go from 22 to 12. Not so surprising, we're going to let that same blob of air rise from 2,000 meters above the Earth's surface to 3,000 meters above the Earth's surface, and it's going to cool from 12 to 2. Do you see how that rate, that cooling rate, and sometimes this is, this is called the dry adiabatic rate, and I'll tell you why. There's a difference between the dry adiabatic rate and a wet adiabatic rate of 10 degrees Celsius per either 1,000 meters or kilometer, one kilometer down there. All right, so in general, we say um, a rising a chunk of air that is rising vertically, going up vertically, um, it will expand and cool if it's dry um, at, at a rate of, for every 1,000 meters it rises, 10 degrees Celsius. Well, then I have, um, I want you also to note, and there are various reasons why this happens. It's not as, I believe, common, but chunks of air can be forced downward. And as they're forced downward, they go up against a greater and greater pressure, okay? And the greater and greater pressure will make them contract. Work is done on the parcel of air then, and it will adiabatically warm. So the rate at which it adiabatically warms for every 1,000 meters it descends is the same as the rate at which it adiabatically cools for every 1,000 meter it ascends. So actually, 
You know, if you had a chunk of air that started up here at 3,000 meters and it was forced downward, it, its first 1,000 meters, it would warm 10 degrees. So it would go from 2 to 12. Its next 1,000 meters, it would warm another 10 degrees. So it would go from 12 to 22. To reach ground level, it would go um, warm from 1,000 meters to the Earth's surface. It, go, it warms another 10 degrees. Um, so it'll go from 22 to 32.